it just hurts my feelings to see people getting shot and dying every week, every day, when it can be stopped right now. Our mission is we help save lives. Cameras are reactive. Our company is proactive. Mm. Predictive analytics, you know, just help people do their job better. So again, it's gonna help the human, it's gonna help the nursing's home, it's gonna help the schools, it's gonna help all these people do their job better. Hey everyone, it's Tamara Thompson with Broadcast to Your Authority, and I'm super excited for our guest of panelists and co-hosts. I'm actually going to pass the mic to my co-host, Lee, who's going to introduce our next guest. Lee? Thanks so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in the studio this morning with a uh, serial entrepreneur and CEO of Safe Space Inter Global, sorry, Scott Boroff. Scott, if you could tell us a little bit about your backstory, that would be great. Thank you, Lee, and thanks for having me here today. Um, I came from a real estate background family. So my first half of my life was doing commercial real estate, mm. uh, shopping centers, golf courses, developing those. And then uh, the last half of my life, the last 16, 18 years, uh, turned into an investment banker. So lived in Knoxville, Tennessee, worked out of New York, taking private companies public. So I've raised over a billion dollars of debt and equity over my lifetime. So you could kind of say I've been raising money my whole life, whether it's real estate or public companies. And so uh, I'm currently CEO of Safe Space Global, which is a, uh, it's a global leader in multimodal AI technology. And people says, what's multimodal and what, what's AI? Investors <laughs> like, you know, well, AI for us is, um, we've got four verticals, mm -hmm. schools, transportation, hospitals, and prisons. Mm. And schools is real sentiment to me and hospitals are. My, I started the company in 2016 as a private company. So again, taking private companies public, following that train of thought, reverse merged it in 2018, um, what I call via bootstrap to New York City. And so I had the pleasure of ringing the NASDAQ bell and the New York bell. So I start with the end in mind. And so if the end with every company I do, ends with either a NASDAQ bell ring or a New York. And so uh, from 2018 to where we are today, we've sit and basically scaled the company. So you got you to gotta build the team. You got to build the product. You got to develop the board of directors. In this case, it's an independent board of directors, audit committee, comp committee, corporate governance. And then once you get ready, uh, then you can uplist. And that takes about six different steps for either facility. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've reached five of the six milestones currently. So it's, it's, it's an exciting time for me to where, all right, now let's turn the gas on, let's put the fuel on it, the team's ready, the product's ready. And man, what a time. I can't wait to talk about our product in this time in America right now that AI is needed. A lot of people think AI is gonna do away with the jobs, but it's really just gonna create more jobs. And it's gonna do away with some as well but it's gonna help the American nurse, doctor, school teacher, whatever, do what they do best, which is teach, educate, compassion, and all that stuff with dignity, so. I love that. I love the fact that you brought it into more like the healthcare space and AI, because we were actually talking about this the other day. They're like, why haven't they, some of them done it as fast with tools to come into the healthcare space, which is one of the most needed spaces for efficiency. Well, and that's, that's how the, you know, my dad, um, been passed away for about 22 years, but, um, he said, Scott, son, you know, when I was at work, it was Scott at home at son, uh, I'm not going to go into a nursing home because yeah, they don't have dignity there. There's there. And this was way back then. Like I saw in 2016, when I exited my last company and started this company, it's like, people are living longer and there's less nurses and doctors to take mm -hmm. care of them. So mm -hmm. something's got to fill that gap, right? Mm -hmm. And my vision was AI technology. And my vision was also was ambient technology. And people ask me, what is ambient technology? I said, well, it's, it's no watches and it's no lanyard. Because when a mom or dad or grandmother or grandfather has to wear something, it makes them feel old. So how can you give them dignity at home or in a nursing home? And my thought was, you know, again, no watches, no lanyard, and we sample sized uh, sensors, LIDAR, radar, and we landed on cameras for our, for our use cases. And uh, so the days of mom or dad following behind closed doors, because they, and the, the, how we named it Safe Space, one of my investors, Bob, I asked her, I said, why, you know, why did you, you take your lanyard off when you got behind closed doors in an assisted care facility? And she goes, because this is my safe space. 
So mm. she got there it's like, and she didn't, you know, she had to wear it out there. She didn't have to wear it inside, but guess what happens? You know, three months later, she falls, breaks her hip, lays there for three or four hours. Cause again, they're understaffed, overworked, underpaid, and we got to stop that. And so, yeah. And that's one of the things I, th- I think I, I, I saw a study. I might be wrong. I'm not a doctor, but I saw, I, I just play one on Instagram, but I, um, I saw a study that it's the number one cause of, of death of, of elderly is actually that it's, it's having, you know, we, we can bones, we can muscles, all of that. And then you, you know, you fall slip, whatever it is. And then, you know, they pass away and there's all these other diseases that we're trying to adjust, but it's being able to have that kind of safe space yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're exactly. protected and yeah. taken care yeah. of and those things happen less or if they do happen there's someone there right away to be able to help them um yeah that's incredible so that's if incredible. You, you can picture this right now they're the largest competitor that's out there They've been around for a long time they're great they have to wear a like a little wristband mm-hmm. and, and 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 they're older so it, it makes their skin rough and, and mm. bleed and so they end up cutting them off and so with our technology, it's real simple. Uh, it's biometric facial recognition. So if you get near a door that you're not supposed to be near, it locks the door. It's amazing. How cool is oh, that? Wow. So it's, it's cost less money. It's a better product. And I think we're going to roll it nationwide and, and, and crush it. So we just had Signature Healthcare just sign up with us yeah. and they love it. And they're one of the big yeah. integrators, innovators in this space. Can you yeah. imagine me walking in six years ago, which I did, the nursing home, and say, hey, I want to put a camera in your room and all throughout the f- your facility. And, and they're the <laughs> they're most like, regulated <laughs> industry in the world. So some of the problem with that is, is, is regulated, right? It's the right. second most regulated industry behind nuclear power. And I was like, how can you get through the regulations? Well, you got to yeah. go from the top down. So we started as a company last year going up to Washington and meeting with Cash Patel, Dr. Oz, mm-hmm. uh, Senator Blackburn from Tennessee, that's right. a real big AI advocate, um, and just saying, hey, we need your help. And there's hundreds of millions of dollars that these facilities pay in fines that are sitting there at our state coffers. And we can't use them because of the AI in our grants. Well, mm-hmm. guess what happened this week? They came through. Washington came through. As of yesterday, CMS passed law that you can use those hundreds of millions of dollars to help our senior agents. Right. You know, so it's exciting. That's what really are, great. Yeah, I'm excited. David Sachs is in there too. Trying yeah, to push ahead everything. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What are some other um, examples of solutions your technology solves? Yeah. So thing, another thing that's close to my heart, uh, my daughter's a, a first grade school teacher, right? And I said, hey, look what we're developing. Look what we're building for all these school shootings. She goes, dad, I don't even want to talk about it. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. they, have, they almost have like PTSD. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't understand that, but I'm like real world. I'm like, when mm-hmm. I grew up, the only thing I had to do at school was, you know, worry about what to have for lunch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was on the menu for lunch. And every once in a while, a tornado drill. Mm-hmm. That was it. Now they've got mm-hmm. bomb threats, school threat, knife threats, gun threats. And so wow. uh, something that's, you know, again, we have our corporate office in Nashville and there's a couple of schools had a shooting in Nashville. And, mm-hmm. and again, if you can just vision this, a lady gets, drives into school. She had graduated two years prior. She sits in the parking lot for 16 minutes, putting her hat on, putting her, hat on you know shoes all of her stuff coats she gets out of the car with her ar-15 she walks to the school kills the uh, janitor kills the head principal and kills a teacher and then kills three nine-year-old kids six kids with our technology today our technology would have looked out into the parking lot it would it would identify who she is person place or thing it would have detected what kind of threat she had in this case it wasn't a knife it was an ar-15 Mm. And then it would have alerted the school resource officer inside the school immediately, right? Wow. So all of a sudden he gets an alert within three to five seconds, not 10, 15 minutes. He looks at that and says, yeah, that's live, pushes a button, 911 wow. is called, the school is locked down. So all of a sudden within a period of five to 30 seconds, wow. all this is in motion versus mm-hmm. nothing. So in today's world, cameras, like we're AI first camera agnostic some people used to think we're a camera company we're a hardware company we're software as a service ai first camera agnostic so our mission is we help save lives and whether it's schools whether it's walking down 345 park avenue in new york city which i've walked down many 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 times seeing this guy double park get out of his car carrying ar-15 walking right straight around the street our technology, had it been on Blackstone's building or Black Rock's building, mm-hmm. would have saw the gun, notified the police officer that's inside the building, locked the building down. 
even if he just kept walking by the building, that 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 police officer would have been notified. He could have ran out and got him before he got to the next building. But, you know, we didn't do it. So it's a camera. So cameras are reactive. Our company is proactive, predictive mm. analytics, you know, just help people do their job better. That's Scott, incredible. you must uh, integrate with access control systems. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. So we're not we're not interfering with what they currently have. We're just coming over top of it. Um, which is good. And again, having not been an access control expert, I've got a PhD in it now, which is, you know, you've got a PhD times 10, but which is what we're going to talk about. So <laughs> yeah, it's, but it, it, and it's different in every school, every situation. So you got to have these, our coders, um, that can write the code to be able to integrate and access with each one of those companies differently and tie into their API. What do you think the biggest challenge is currently getting this in front of more people and more organizations? Is it the approval process? It's, 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 it's politics. Mm -hmm. It's the approval process of, you know, is it safety over privacy? Mm. And oh, by the way, Miss Jones, your kids come to school. Do you want to know where she's at if she if there's a shooting or do you care? Mm -hmm. and if you want to know where she's at, check this box because we're going to be everybody that comes in. We're going to be taking their biometric facial recognition. But at the same time, you know, if you check the box, we'll know where they're at. And, but that's the biggest issue. It's really, it's, you know, FERPA and HIPAA and there's, there's it's, I've spent millions of dollars on contracts just dealing with that politics. I, one, another, another market that comes to mind is like there's facilities out there that caretake for people with disabilities and they have like hundreds of people with disabilities in there. Is that something that you guys are exploring? Like and like helping that market out as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Abs absolutely. And, and AI is so big and it's just getting started. Uh, we've decided as a company, like we have to stick to these four verticals. Uh, the other vertical is transportation. So we're in the Kansas city uh, transit system out in Kansas city, the world FIFA tournament is coming in next year. And I'm like, well, what use cases do they have? Well, sexual, trafficking, sexual predators, mm -hmm. guns on a bus. They have 241 buses every day. They find a gun, load a gun on a bus when they go in to clean them up. And wow. like band riders. So if you're a rider that's not supposed to be on the bus, they have the band rider list. So band rider gets on the bus and notifies corporate that second he gets on the bus at the next stop, he's off mm -hmm. on trains, transit, Uber cars, Lyft cars. I mean, it's all, it's there. You must have difficulty keeping up with the verticals that you can go into in this, eh? It is. I've had to, be, you know, we've hired experts in each vertical, which is good. And so uh, one of our board members has come out of JSOC. And so he's about as high as you can get security wise. And so for, you know, every vertical that we have, we go out and get an expert so we don't have to retrain. Find your who. Fantastic. What was the fourth vertical? Uh, real had, estate? Yeah, we had schools. Schools. Transportation, hospitals, hospitals, transportation, and prisons. Mm. Prisons, got it. In prisons, when I was first talking to the prisoners, like, well, you know, we can detect guns inside of prison. It's like, Scott, we don't have guns inside of prisons. <laughs> and so, uh, but what they have is, one of their use cases is if I'm a prisoner in pod A and there's a gang in pod D, my job is to go to, to get to pod D and kill the guy. Mm. I'm in there for murder anyway, so it doesn't matter. And so when you walk into a prison, all they have is like the one that we've, we've been into several of them, but one of them is like two ladies sitting here like at an air traffic control center and they're pushing buttons throughout these, there's 2,300 prisoners in this one prison and they have to push a button to open and close the door throughout the whole prison. So again, we're not going to eliminate her job. Our technology today can go from where she's watching 200, like the hu human eyes watching 200 cameras, you're going to miss something. Mm. And, and they missed something when we were walking through the prison. I'm like, Mr. Warden, because we went into the prison, in with the prisoners, in with the, in, and we're right there with them. And I'm like, isn't that door supposed to shut behind me? Mm. He said, yeah, it is. That's part of the problem. That's why you're here. Mm. And so yeah. our technology would literally scan 200 cameras all at once. And if you're supposed to be in pod A to get to pod D, it'll let you in automatically. And then the only thing they need to do is just look at the exceptions. So again, it's going to help the human. It's going to help the nursing home. It's going to help the schools. It's going to, it's going to help all these people do their job better mm -hmm. with compassion. And how do you see it um, evolving into 
other industries, maybe even the real estate space. Yeah, the real estate. And that's that's something to my heart as well, because mm -hmm. I hate paperwork. Right. And so yeah. literally the <laughs> yeah. agentic AI, which you guys can talk about, can literally take the brain. That's everything that I currently do on every development project and break it down into its pieces. Mm -hmm. If it's public, you're going to be able to push a button and form an LLC, write me a web page, run title, run you run the deed is the deed brought it in. It's all these things that humans do currently right now can all be done through agentic AI. How do you see the, uh, maybe it's more in the hospitality or, or hospitals, healthcare space on the side of AI plus human connection and compassion. Yes. Have you had those difficult Well, I mean, that's again, that's what it's, I mean, literally it's going to get like nurse after nurse that I've talked to is like, mm -hmm. I want to get back to doing what I, came what here to do well, not fill yeah. out all this paperwork yeah. not yeah, do all exactly. this stuff and even my doctor when i had my full physical last week i said when are you going to stop using that microphone and he turned his phone over he said well i've actually got agentic ai taping our whole conversation I said, so that's good we'll put that down that'll that'll do it better than you do you'll forget mm -hmm. something and so mm -hmm. so it's coming around and it, again it just gets back to helping them do what they got you know became a doctor or a teacher or whatever to do Oh, I'm just really impressed with the company and with a, a guy with an entrepreneurial background like you have. I think people should pay attention to this because it sounds like it's got tremendous potential. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye out I like on it. this one. Thank you. It's uh, again, from not having a technological background, I just, I have a vision to see problems and try to figure out solutions mm -hmm. and then go find the best people in that space to partner up with, to, to figure it out. Smart. So we got a great team. Very impressive. Yeah. Do you have anything else um, coming up or going on that you want to share with our audience or um, we'd love to share how you can connect with them as well? Yeah. So again, we're uh, looking to get on the national TV shows because again, it just, it just hurts my feelings to see people getting shot and dying every week, every day when it can be stopped right now. Mm -hmm. And again, that's our passion. We help save lives mm -hmm. and however we can get that out there to our audience would be great. And, uh, our website is uh, safespaceglobal.ai. So that's the website. The stock symbol is SSGC. So we are a publicly traded pink sheet company, fully reporting, looking to uplist uh, this year. Um, and uh, I can be found on Instagram and YouTube and all the social channels, uh, Scott Borf. And that's it. Yeah. I love it. Well, we really appreciate you joining us out here in the studio today. Well, thank you. It's been, ex been yeah. exciting. I love Thanks it. for your time. Thank love you. It. It's been great. Yeah, we'll have to, have to do a part two on that too, because I want to see how it evolves over. Yeah. 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 Well, so, now, yeah. Like, you know, it's, I thought it was a three month sale cycle, but we're dealing with enterprise scale like clients. Yeah. yeah. The vast. government, transportation, yeah. uh, hospitals, you know, it's, everything's, it's, it's a nine to 12 month, but we're in that 12 month of having, you know, 30 global salespeople in Singapore and India and U.S. everywhere out it's pitching incredible. the product every day, even cruise ships. Like, yeah. so what's, what's cruise ships have? They're like, it's kind of interesting. Oh, I mean, I'm excited to see where this yeah. goes. So yeah. I'm, I'm great, good. grateful to know you and yeah. glad that you joined us today. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's good. And those of you that are watching, be sure to subscribe to Broadcast Your Authority on YouTube. Follow us over on Apple or Spotify or anywhere you listen to your audio podcast. And we'll see you in the next episode.